satisfies. A declarative sentence is an open statement if it satisfies the following condition. First one, it contains one or more variables. Second one, it is not a statement, but it becomes a statement when the variables in it are replaced by certain allowable choices. So these allowable choices will form the universe of disclosure for the open statement. Let us see the examples. The first one is uh, an open statement with one variable is uh, p of x such that the number x plus 2 is an even integer and an open statement with two variables example is q of x y such that x is equal to y or it could be x greater than y or x less than y or x greater than or equal to y so on are the examples for two variable open statements. Let us see the notations for the quantifiers. So there are two kinds of quantifiers. One is the existential quantifier, another is a universal quantifier. So suppose the open statement is p of x such that number x plus 2 is an even integer. And another uh, open statement q of x y such that the numbers y plus 2, x minus y and uh, x plus 2 y are even integers. Now if we replace x by phi in p of x then the number x plus phi is an even integer will be false. Therefore, we write the truth value of p of x when x equal to phi as p of phi as false. And the negation of p of 7 is true because p of 7 is false and the negation of p of 7 will be true. And uh, suppose your uh, x is uh, 4 and y is 2 and you substitute in q of x y then the numbers y plus 2 it is nothing but 2 plus 2 4 and x minus y which is nothing but 4 minus 2 which is 2 and x plus 2y which is 4 plus 2 into 2 are even integers. So all these will be even integers. So q of 4 2 will be true. So likewise p of 6 is true and negation of p of 8 is false and q of 3 4 is false. Therefore here what we can observe here is for some x p of x is true and for some x negation of p of x is true and for some x and y q of x y is true and for some x and y negation of x uh, q of x y is true. Quantifiers are used in conjunction with the logical connectives universe here suppose we consider the universe as the real numbers are in following cases then suppose p of x is x greater than or equal to 0 q of x is x square is greater than or equal to 0 r of x is x square minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0 and s of x is x square minus 3 is greater than 0 then if you consider the quantified statement there exists x p of x and r of x so what does it mean here is when uh, p of x is greater than or e p of x is nothing but x greater than or equal to 0 and r of x is nothing but x square is greater than or equal to 0. So here for x equal to 4 or x equal to 2 or x equal to 1 then p of uh, 4 and r of 4 or p of 2 and r of 2 p of uh, 1 and r of 1 all will be true both will be true so therefore we say that there exist x p of x and r of x is true so there exist will be true when for one value of x p of x and r of x is true next comes uh, for all x p of x implies q of x so whenever it is for all x so if you replace uh, p of uh, x by any value of x then q of x also has to be true when p of x is true implies q of x is true for all values of x then we say that for all of x p of x implies q of x is true so how this is true here is if x is greater than or equal to 0 it obvi it is obvious that q of x which is x square is greater than or equal to 0 therefore for every value of x p of x implies q of x is true. So when you know that for all x p of x implies q of x is true, it is obvious that 
for some value of x, p of x implies q of x is true. Therefore, there exists x, p of x implies q of x is true. Next comes for all x, q of x implies s of x. So, here u of x is nothing but x square is greater than or equal to 0. When this is true, then if s of x is also true, then it is true. But since if you observe that s of x is nothing but x square minus 3x minus 4 and if the value of x is equal to 1, then this will be x square is nothing but 1 minus 3 minus 4 equal to 0. This will not be satisfied. Therefore, for all x, q of x implies s of x is false. So, whenever it is false, you have to give the counter example for which this whole statement that is q of x implies s of x is false. So, your implication is false whenever q of x is true and s of x is false. So, likewise the remaining for all x, r of x or s of x. So, here it is r. So, either r of x is true or s of x is true but, and uh, any one has to be true for the whole statement to be true. But here if you take x equal to 5 or x equal to 6, so both will be false. Therefore, this will be false. Then for all x, r of x implies p of x is also false. Again, the counter example is when x is equal to minus 1. So, here you make a two notes. One is for all x, p of x implies there exists x, p of x. So, that is because if uh, the for all x, p of x is true, which indicates that there is at least one x for which this p of x is true. Therefore, this is true. Second one is if you have some x for which p of x is true, it does not imply for all x, p of x is true. True. This is obvious because there are some possibilities of uh, x for which p of x may be false. So, you cannot claim that for all x p of x is true. Next, implicit quantification is universal quantification. So, if they have not specified any quantifier, it is by default, it is a universal quantification. So, that is sin square x plus cos square x is 1. It is nothing but for all x, sin square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. And uh, when it is the sentence that is the integer 41 is equal to sum of two perfect squares, it is given by their existence, their existence, which is such that 41 is equal to m square plus n square. So, here 41 is equal to sum of two perfect squares. So, if you consider two perfect squares as m square and n square, then it is equal to 41. And this is only for few values of m and n. Therefore, it is their existence and their existence such that 41 is equal to m square plus n square. Now, suppose p of x and q of x are open statement. Then for all x, p of x implies q of x. Then for the above implication, what is the contrapositive, converse and inverse? So here contrapositive is nothing but for all x, negation of q of x implies negation of p of x. And converse is for all x, q of x implies p of x. We are just changing p and uh, q in the converse. Next the inverse is for all x. Negation of p of x implies negation of q of x. So, here we have already seen this without the quantifier. So, now you apply the quantifier. So, if it is for all, you apply the for all. If it is there exist, you write the there exist. That's all. Note here the implication and contrapositive are logically equivalent as in the previous case. And inverse and converse are also logically equivalent. And... Uh, there exist x, r of x and s of x is not equivalent to there exist x, r of x and there exist x, s of x. How, why? Because here, the, here this there exist x is applied for the and. And uh, this is not equal to there exist x, r of x and there exist x, s of x. Also, there exist x, r of x 
and there exist x is of x is does not imply there exist x r of x and s of x because here for some value of x this may be true or this may be true or both may be true it does not imply there exist x r of x for the same x this s of x or r of x one will be you know, both will be true but there exist x r of x and s of x implies there exist x r of x and there exist s of x and the second one there exist x r of x or s of x implies it is not implied it is equivalent to there exist x r of x or there exist x s of x and the next one for all x r of x and s of x is equivalent to for all x r of x and for all x s of x and the last one for all x r of x or for all x s of x implies for all x r of x or s of x <coughs> associativity over and and or with universal quantifier is satisfied and de morgan's over and and or with universal is satisfied and double negation with universal quantifier is also satisfied now let us see the rules for negating the statements with one quantifier the first one negation of for all x p of x is logically equivalent to so first negation you apply to the quantifier for all x will change to there exist x and this negation is also applied to the p of x so it becomes negation of p of x now for the second one there negation for p negation of there exist x p of x is equivalent to negation when you apply to the existential quantifier will become universal quantifier that is for all x and negation of p of x is negation of p of x and here for the third one the answer is there exist x p of x because negation of negation will become p of x and here for all x negation of uh, p of x will become negation of p of x so it is uh, here it is a uh, negation of p of x